Here we are, we're back again. And what might end up being the final reaction uh, to this content creator is I'm not sure he has any plans to continue to do any more content for the game. Uh, that's kind of a squeeze that a lot of people, I would imagine, the few that are left, uh, even considering making any kind of discussion topics around this game, uh, at channels like mine, which, I mean... Am I the only channel that's even remotely like this for this game? Probably. Um, yeah, the well is drying up. Uh, and I was thinking about this earlier. I There's been times where the future of the game has looked bleak. Uh, for sure, with all the developmental pitfalls and stuff we've fallen into. But for some reason, the post-4x or the post-quad uh, XP thing that just went on, which I don't think... There were people exclaiming and uh, talking about how that did wonders for the game, but even even looking at global populations and then per-server populations in terms of peaks and, and averages, it really didn't do that much. Uh in fact, the for average daily players, this that four times XP thing didn't even make up for the losses we had last month. So, in the last two months, we're still a net negative, or maybe it's three months. It's it's a window of like two or three months. But the four times XP didn't even make up for that, and uh, the four times XP is over. So yeah. Also, uh, on a on a personal note, I haven't even I have not logged into the game. I haven't played a single second of this game in like I don't know, going on forty days. Uh, I played it for a, a little bit, like probably July and August, a little bit in September. But other than that, I mean, all the all the same stuff that still sucks still sucks. Uh, community still sucks. A game runs like shit. The servers are shit. Uh, oh, and on and on and on. You, you've heard this from me before. But yeah, but for whatever reason, the game... I don't... There's no, like, the fishing thing happened and it's a huge nothing burger. And it really feels like there's absolutely, absolutely nothing to expect. There's nothing to expect. There's nothing... The roadmap, whatever roadmap they had going on at the beginning of the year doesn't seem to be a thing because they've kind of strayed from that a little bit. All the class rebalance stuff, uh, is that, I, I don't think that's happening, uh, which is probably makes sense because it would be, it would be the only thing I would even be remotely interested in. But, of course, yeah, game feels, game really, really, really feels pathetically uh, sad right now. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this video that I'm reacting to today, enough of that. Uh this video that I'm reacting to, I had even debated if I was going to react to it. It went up, I think, almost a month ago. But it, within the first two days of it being up, it got taken down. It got made unlisted or privated for some reason. Uh, I think he explains it in one of his, in the, even the description of the video. Uh, and I had watched it then and had, there were some things that uh, I wanted to chime in on here. Uh, but I hadn't, I hadn't like downloaded or recorded the video or anything. I usually just go to the video's page and do it that way. But in this case, the video was down for a while, and then I lost interest. And then, but it came back up about a week or a week and a half ish ago. And I had considered, I talked about it in the last video, I considered doing it, uh, just as a final aside, or not a final aside. This is a, a final send off because the the tone of this video is very um very 
zealous is not going to talk about the game anymore. Uh, and a lot of his his uh, big grand idea and most of the videos that I have reacted to from his channel are unlisted or privated anymore. And in general, if you go back uh, and look at the videos that I've reacted to, I usually, I think, always leave a link. Uh, in the description to the original video, and most of those you can't you can't even view the video anymore. So, in a lot of ways, the only way to watch those videos is to watch me react to those videos. So, uh, but he has his reasons for taking the stuff down. Uh, I think his reasoning was sort of based on uh, he wanted to influence the devs' decisions in order to he they were dev suggestions to make the game better and. I mean, I've each of those videos I've spent at least an hour on individually uh, breaking down uh, why that's not the case, or or what's wrong with the thinking, or or all of that stuff. Uh, if you ha if you didn't know, I've made some playlists. I finally got off my ass and made some playlists. I haven't I haven't gone back and uh, time stamped really much, but. Uh, the all the serious reactions are in one playlist. All the zealous reactions are in one playlist. I think all the rel interview reactions are in one playlist, and then um, there's some various other playlists. So, if you want to go back and uh, enjoy the history of that and see some of those videos and my reactions to them that that you haven't seen before, they're all in the playlist. So you don't have to dig around in the main channel uh, looking for them. Uh, this one will go there too. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the state of Planet Side Two. All right, I'm gonna finally get the OBS off. I don't know why I left this here, but uh, let's see what Zealous has to say about the state of Planet Side Two. From and this time frame is about in the last calendar month or so. So yeah, let's get it going. My videos have always been about trying to improve the game or get it in a state that I think is a bit better than it was previously. So that may be things like the Spawn Priority system and getting that back in. That was like two or three years ago now. And then there was a few other things as well. Capture the Flag, Ocean, and a few others as well. But the thing... Yeah, like um, constantly, constantly, every single video tends to be about uh, why good players are bad for the game. Let's leave that one out. Uh, he he has talked about uh, Osher and Capture the Flag, and I think there's a lot of points I actually agree with him on in the Hot Takes video he did. I forget what... That was last year, I think, sometime, last summer. Uh, I agreed with a lot of takes uh, in that video, and I didn't think... I didn't think the first, like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of it was even... Uh, well, it, it was about 20 to 30 takes in 12 minutes. So my reaction to it, I don't think the first 10 to 15 minutes of it, there, there was all that much I disagreed with. But uh, consistently and constantly what it's always come back to with this guy is for somehow, some way, this guy has lived in a reality of the game uh, that doesn't take into account eight years of Rel uh, trying to buff shitters and... Uh, compress the skill gap with every single patch he ever worked on or did. Um, new player experience patch uh, and Arsenal update, the uh, two like super key big examples. Uh, yeah, I guess just gloss over that, uh, the other stuff. But th that's th the entire, actually the entire reason I even discovered this guy and got into making uh, sort of reactions and adding him to my stable of people I make reactions to is is because of his outfit wars, his one v one outfit wars takes. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of there's been a lot of winner takes uh, over the years from this guy and on improving the game. Uh, yeah, that's that's totally subjective. Uh, the things that you so, I w I kind of wish. I kind of wish we would have gotten more uh, core fun do mental uh, problems videos from this guy because he only ever made one. Well, maybe he made two. I think I know there's one I definitely reacted to that was basically a uh, good players and people who kill uh, shitters uh, and chain kills on shitters are bad for the game. Uh, that was the gist of that video. I wish we could have seen more into the mind of of uh, why 
why the game is suffering uh, from this guy's point of view but apparently i don't know we'll see where he goes with the thing is i've kind of lost the motivation to do that part of this channel and really talk about planet side in that way simply because there's so many other games within other genres that i kind of these days kind of don't feel that enthused about planet side it's not that i'm even mad or i'm disappointed or i'm trying to be doomer it's just kind of just to say, look, like, I'm happy that we had the time that we did playing Planet Side. The game was absolutely stellar in 2020 and 2021. Truly, like, I loved playing the game. Again, uh, totally subjective, but in general, um, th the game feels more alive, obviously. It's, it's a fucking MMO uh, FPS PvP shooter game. Uh, that thrives on having people playing it. The MMO part is there's people playing it. Uh, and as the pops slowly bleed away over over time, then the game gets more empty and the entire backbone of the game being based around having people and generating fights and, and moving people around a map and doing all those things, it really, really, really gets anemic. Uh, to say the least. Um, but I think casuals also have a hard time understanding that 2020 Planet Side 2 is a total mirage. And it's 2020 Planet Side 2 escalation in particular is a total mirage. Uh, because it was it was something that happened to fall right in time with an unprecedented once in a generation type uh, world event. And I, f I find it interesting that I find it interesting that there's still so many casuals that that talk about the escalation patch itself uh, so reverently. And because when I look, and I've, I've talked about this before, but when I look back at Escalation, looking back at Escalation, I see asset flips from PSA. Um, I see Sanctuary, which is one of the biggest nothing burger additions to the game ever. Uh, it's, there's absolutely zero point to having that in, in this game, as evidenced by... Uh, the fucking eight, eight years of the game before Sanctuary that was just fine. Um, Bastions, which are a big, a big bugged as shit spectacle nothing burger for getting casuals dicks hard, which added nothing to the game except cancer. Uh, you could make a little bit more of a case for some of the outfit stuff and the introduction of the, the absolutely god-awful format of the 1v1v1 outfit wars. That uh, that did get people excited, but not as not as much as you'd think uh, in terms of, of pop gain, I don't think. And, yeah, there's, there's no way I can... I think you can attribute the ass absolutely astronomical growth something that something that this game had not seen like under besides launch the game had never really grown like that ever maybe a little bit for like Hassan release and whatever summer that was like summer 2014 a pretty big bump but it was nothing like launch nothing since then especially nothing since then with the with the team that rel worked on which was just one pathetic out of touch shitty update after another after another after another people really do forget how pathetic and shit how we got nothing and nothing that ever actually needed to be worked on got worked on in those in those intermediate years i would say i guess you could I guess you could break down the game's development from like pre-development, which this this game this game didn't even have a big development time. Uh, you could, I guess, you could break it down from 20, 2012, end of twenty twelve launch to mid twenty fifteen ish. 
Or if you really wanted to go, I guess you could go to 2016. I know most of the guys started leaving in like late 2014, mid 2015 to put on other projects or leave the company or whatever. But And then you have a period of 2016 to I think 2020 or 2016 through 2019 all the way through to the beginning of 2020. I think that's a pretty good way to break it down and uh, categorize it. But we forget how absolutely stale, stagnant, and pathetic 2016 through 2019 was. You know, 2016, you have Rel joins the team middle of the early, mid spring, middle of the year type there. I was I was overseas in Asia at the time. And um you just had bad change after bad change, you know. Two tiers of drop on LMGs and AR for no reason at all whatsoever. Uh combined arms initiative, absolutely dog shit awful. Um uh, basically trying to kill off your vehicle game to a appeal completely to shitters again we have to we've ruined every single phase of the game to appeal to shitters that are never coming to play and not staying to play uh we did that uh just more dog shit nonsense that added nothing to the game more more and more leaning into the cancer ass implants parasitic implant gameplay design uh Really sad, pathetic time period. Um, and then we go, we get through that. Uh, so PSA takes a huge fat shit uh, because they decided to make it a a BR game, which absolutely zero. The only people who were going to play that game were Planet Side Two players, because uh, why would you play that when Apex just came out and it's free to play? Uh, you're going to make Planet Side Arena. Uh, and the only people you're going to get to play Planet Side Arena are Planet Side 2 players. So you have to cannibalize Planet Side 2 to have players for Planet Side Arena. Well, guess what? Planet Side 2 players don't want to play a Battle Royale game. So uh, if you had released that game with any other game mode than the fucking shitty Battle Royale that we told you nobody wanted, uh, yeah, your game wouldn't have shit the bed and flopped and died instantly. So the fallout of that is you get a bunch of, of uh, talentless hacks uh, moved over to the Planet Side 2 team, Cardo included, uh, gets to come back and work on the game, and they hype up this big fucking escalation patch, and that coincides with a global pandemic, a once-in-a-generation global pandemic, which I was having a look at the Steam. Uh, somebody had made a post about uh, all-time concurrent Steam users the other day, and I went and looked at that. It's like 38 million or something. And it's funny, there's a, a big fucking star asterisk uh, in this fucking line graph of uh, when the WHO <laughs> declared a fucking worldwide uh, pandemic. And the spike, I, I think I think it would be pretty much impossible or hard, hard for your game not to see growth. I think this individual Steam users grew by like something like 4 million which was I think almost twice as much as they would see year over year uh in the 2 to 3 years prior to that. So COVID COVID and the uh the China virus uh were a uh, a major absolutely fucking major driver of game traffic and population during this time. And uh, this, Sirius is someone who especially leaves this out. And people who want to suck the game's dick and suck Rel's dick and suck all their dicks till the end of time will always leave out the fact that, yeah, probably like 75 to 80% of the traffic that got driven to the game is just a, a runoff or trickle-down effect of uh, what's going on in the world. And these guys don't ever... I've, I have, I've specifically corrected Sirius on this multiple times. Uh, and he usually shifts the goalposts. If you correct him on it, if you correct him on it, he'll say that uh, we kept those populations for six months. Well, that's not true either. Uh... 
how about 97% of those players gained for escalation? How about 97% of them are gone within 90 days? Uh, 90 days is three months. So, no, you're... I, I guess if you really want to be dishonest and uh, be full of shit enough to, to be absolutely pedantic as fuck to try to save your little shitty point and make the case that the last 3% out of 100 uh, bled off <laughs> after six months... Okay, but when you're when you're having to stoop to that level, uh, to try to make your point, uh, it becomes really obvious that, uh, you're probably just trying to make an argument for something that isn't there. Uh, so yeah, yeah, escalation, overrated. Escalation is the biggest fucking casual shitter mirage for dick suck rel defenders. Uh, and dev defenders for this game that I think I think the game has ever seen. Uh, the actual inability to accept the reality of the uh, real world situation at that time, and uh, saying, thinking, thinking outright that your game game gained three to four thousand average daily players because they put bastions in the game. Uh. And Sanctuary. And some shitty 1v1v1 outfit wars. Uh, which I think that even came a little bit later. I don't even think... I'm not a, I, I don't think that came right then. Maybe we were talking about qualifying. But to say that you got fucking three to 4,000 average daily players uh, for Escalation as a patch... Um... You're no longer living in reality, okay? So, yeah. That's a lot of players, and the game just in general is a lot fucking better when there's players. Um, some of, some of, most, mostly all casuals were, were fooled by this, even, even coming out of it three months later. Um, there's still this feeling of, well, the, the players are actually all those players are gone three months later. So it, it, it threw, it threw Rel. It bought him time is what it did. COVID threw a, a hapless, incompetent moron in Rel, a life preserver or a, and a life jacket and a second chance that he didn't deserve. And, uh, he showed you, he showed you what he did with that second chance, okay? In in twenty one and in twenty one and twenty two, uh, he showed you exactly what he did with that second chance, uh, and guaranteed there wouldn't be a third chance, and probably guaranteed that there would never be another game. So yeah. But it really got me thinking like as to exactly why and I quickly wanted to touch on why for me at least and I think a lot of other people they've kind of moved on and I wanted to talk about where we are now relative to say a year ago or two years ago and also where we're heading because I think it's fundamentally different than any other era of Planetside. So where we are right now as far as I can tell is largely the player base that's left is primarily casual players who are in their fast thousand hours, two thousand hours and also returning players. Both of these groups I would say are there for primarily the novelty of all the different classes, the different weapons, the different implants, the different combinations of things you can do together, the uh, vehicles, all the different play styles you have whether it's um, zarg surfing or point holding or you want to go uh, pop dump and bases and try to win a lot. Those are kind of all the same thing. No matter what it is, during that first 1,000 hours, 2,000 hours, when there's lots of, you know, map variation to go enjoy, maps you haven't played on yet, I think for a lot of people that definitely does keep them engaged, and those players are still there. But once you kind of get past that initial phase, you want to then get in-depth into a system. But the issue really now... Okay. He's said this before. Well, if, if you're trying to get in-depth into a system... 
after you are at a thousand to two thousand hours. Now, to be honest, and I'll quickly mention this, is that if you want to do air to ground as an example, there's so much anti-air to ground that it's pretty much impossible. So then therefore there's no air to air because there's nothing for them to counter. Because you can just use a lock on to kill an air to ground pilot. So why would you use an air to air vehicle? And then on top of that as well. Uh, lock ons are pretty shit. Uh, and I'm not even a pilot. Uh, if you're a good pilot, I there I've seen a lot of good pilots, man. Do you know how hard it is to hit a good pilot with a lock on? If you're actually trying, the the lock on launchers are so with with it. I guess it de de depends kind of on the base and the the topography, uh, and the area of the map you're fighting on. But I always laugh. I always laugh when even even when I would air to ground, which was like super super rare. But I've 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 used air to ground before. Uh, even when I would always laugh at getting a lock and then the guy, the poor bastard, like the poor bastard BR fucking 12 NC heavy that is standing out in the open fucking waiting for his shit to lock on. And you're just like, you just look at him and laugh at him and shit on him and kill him instantly. I, I got to imagine how bad that feels. It's another one of those new player fucking the whole new player bullshit with giving all new players like the air to fucking the the ground to air lock on launchers again another perfect example of you didn't listen to the people that know the most about the domains in the game because you're the big boy developer and you think you know everything but it, you are so out of touch with the reality of the game and in your own little echo chamber that you don't understand what works and what doesn't and why your ideas don't make sense and all the, I happen to, I've mentioned a lot of times on this channel that watching people that played air to air was one of, one of my favorite fucking things to do. Like in general for me, like I don't, I will usually never watch anyone worse than me. I don't like watching bad players fucking stream or play the game. It's just, it, it's kind of really fucking annoying. Um, but in terms of like, watching other good players in their individual uh which i call it's their individual domains uh that's one of my favorite things and watching air to, really good air to air players play was like so fucking cool uh always enjoyed doing that and in having conversations and watching their streams and them talk about it it's like the the fucking ground to air launcher proliferation didn't doesn't really stop it didn't really stop air to ground the 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 only thing that stopped or lowered the kill potential in air to ground shit was nerfing the air to ground weapons the there's i know there's inexperienced i know enough to know that that inexperienced and bad pilots will always complain about ground locks um for the most part but a lot of the time, I don't, I don't really feel like there's just a, a lot of people running around with looking for ground to air locks. At least when I watch people play the game that are were air to air dog fighting, or people that pulled air to air to fight air to ground shitters, uh, it's annoying. But it, it, that's never going to solve the problem. And a side effect of doing that is now you're going to get all these people who. Are going to be targeting the fucking air to the guys who are dedicated air to air, which in turn just makes the skies clearer for fucking air to grounders. So it it doesn't make sense from any fucking point of view. But once again, once again, we have to listen and endure a change from someone who has no fucking clue what they're doing and ignores all relevant feedback. Um. So, yeah, there you go. Another perfect example of uh, something Rel did with his second chance. Rel got a second chance uh, after the mirage of escalation and uh, continued to actually, I think, fundamentally just got fucking worse. And I think he'll even he even admits that to himself or he admits that in interviews uh, and even in his own I'm leaving Daybreak Games video. Well, you got like the harassers, which just get blown up w with one barrage from a prowler if they've got a top gun as well. And then you.
Yeah, fuck harass. I don't. I don't care about harassers. I've said, talked about this before. Is casual shitters want harassers to be highly mobile, fucking intensely fucking armored, uh, kill everything vehicles that drive around. Fuck off. You got the NSO vehicles and Arsenal in general Who being cares? pretty mediocre, and you combine that with thinking about things like when's the last time we even saw a construction player? When's the last time you saw a router? When's the last time at least a uh, construction adds absolutely nothing to the game, and it is a total waste of time. Uh, construction is in the game for people who accidentally found themselves in a first-person shooter game and, and can't uh, compete uh, either mechanically or fucking uh, cognitively. Those are the people who play construction. Uh, no, it has no place, no business even being in, in the game. And trying to shoehorn and jam the dick of construction into this game over nine years has been a, co a completely awful, total fucking waste of time. Uh, and if you interact with that system uh, nowadays, if you are someone who logs in purely to play fucking construction in this game, uh, one of the, the seven or eight people that do that, like, why the fuck, why are you, I, I mean... Cobalt that I saw a point hold with more than six people, maybe 12 at a real push, you know, maybe a year, year ago at least, I would say, to be honest. And so I've got to ask myself, for me at least, I think fundamentally the game has shifted towards more of a casual player base, and that's fine. It's just different, and it's a different set of values. Wait, what? The game has shifted. Weren't you the same guy just, what is it, 10 months ago, 11 months ago? Weren't you the same guy saying that all the casuals are pushed out of the game? And if you're a casual, you can't play the game? That's kind of been your... That's kind of been your your motif and your, your go-to argument for a couple years now. So let me get this straight. In the span of in the span of about eight to ten months, uh, your two years of theory craft on the game being uh, inaccessible for casual players has now turned into what again? And that's fine. It's just different, and it's a different beast. I think fundamentally the game has shifted towards more of a casual player base. And that's fine. It's just different, and it's a different set of values. It's people that like to play on TI Alloys, you know, back when that was popular, or Biolabs. And the modern version of that is obviously just The Ascent, The Crown, Nason's Defiance. It's those perpetual fights that don't necessarily have the same variation and depth of... You know why those fights constantly happen? You know why those fights constantly happen? Because of, of, of blob-stable lattice and there not being enough pop on the fucking servers to open the map up fully. And granted, yeah, it's a problem. Even when the map does open up fully, you have these these shitters that will not leave these fucking th dog shit ass fights to go do anything. And I, how many times have you watched? How many times have you guys watched a a newly a new continent with uh, unstable blob gate, right? Uh, with okay, there's nobody on, there's 40 people on the server, there's a fight at Nason's or the Ascent or whatever god-awful shit tier fucking middle base that we've been playing for 10 fucking years is there. Uh, and then the rest of the continent slowly opens up. But these people, these guys never leave the fucking middle base because they're retarded uh, and then they end up losing a whole bunch of shit. They'll hold on to they'll hold on to that center base, but they'll lose. They'll literally lose an alert to to not lose that center base. Uh, in the moment, yeah, they're playing at the base. They're, they're probably not thinking about it, but yeah, the reason the reason there's so little base variety with these lower pops is because of the the mechanics that the game has the the unstable fucking blob gate. Uh, mechanic is just it leads to a super ultra stale fucking uh, game environment now that's not to say that I don't, I don't necessarily think that opening the game opening the, the entire lattice up um, with with really super low pops is is a solution 
uh, because uh, for those of you guys that did not play the game back in the old days, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to think about the old hex system. Having played in the old hex system before, there was something before Lattice. For those of you who are, who don't understand that or weren't there to experience it, um, the whole Lattice uh, hex adjacency shit didn't exist. Um, in terms of being connected uh, to each other in that way. And what it led to was a lot of, in, in the hex system, there was a lot, absolutely a shit ton of ghost capping. Because there, no, there was no logical, there was no linear path progression in terms of map flow in general. And now the, that system didn't last very long. We eventually got Lattice. And I know there... I know there were a fair bit of people that were not big fans of Lattice because Lattice Lattice will always be less strategic uh, than not having it. I think I think even if you're a fan of Lattice, I don't think you can really make the case that. Uh, just having no lattice and lattice, I don't think you can make the case that lattice is more of a strategic chessboard than it. It all gets way more predictable and it all gets way more linear with lattice as opposed to the the hex system. Now both of them them have their problems, but we've been on lattice for a really long time. And part of the problem. Part of the problem with the game feeling stale right now and fighting the same fucking bases over and over again. Now, granted, the primetime absolute drooling morons who will log in and play this game five, six hours a night will never... I mean, they don't care. They'll play at the same shitty base for forever. But when it when you get to... If you ever play off hours, man, and there's one continent with unstable warp gate, it's just the same... Every single fucking day, it's the same. It's so it's so repetitive. It's so boring. It's so tedious. It's the same players. It's just... I mean, one of the problems with that, the whole thing is... This, it's based on how many people are on the server. Uh, so you need players to alleviate that kind of problem. But you're not gonna... You're not getting any players because you don't make your game any better meta game that oftentimes a lot of us enjoy it is a bit more selfish level and that's fine it, it, again my dude the meta game that you enjoy in particular has always been absolutely the most bare bones surface level shit ever now you've lied to yourself and you've lied to your outfit mates internally and you all lie to yourselves and pretend that there's some great fucking depth that in reality has never been there um, this is a problem for casuals and Zerg blob shitters that goes back to the beginning of the game. Uh, assigning a level of depth to just dumping pop on fucking bases in a lattice line, it's one of the most confusing mind frames or mindsets I think I've ever seen in, in almost any game. Uh, fooling yourself into thinking that you're doing some deep fucking strategic gameplay when at the most basic level, all you're doing is dumping pop on a singular base over and over again. That's all you're doing. It When you boil it down to it, you don't want to admit it. Uh, you'll never admit it because you have to assign some level. You have to use... You have to use the, the L word, logistics, and you have to use the T word, tactics, my tactics. You gotta, you've got to pass your really super simple shitter-brained strategy in playbook, which is maybe one page uh, in a coloring book. You've got to somehow pretend that it's, it's, something, it's something else, or at least tell yourself. Because God forbid you would admit that you're, grand strategy is really simplistic dog shit uh but these these people are not the ones to do that and now now to go now to come out of it and, and join uh your whatever your your pretend 2kd good player outfit on miller on an nc character and now now pretend to be on the other side of it and say yeah the game's just not as deep as it used to be it's the same fucking game 
And you guys, all the people that are winning bases are doing the same exact fucking thing they've been doing for over a decade, my dude. Spare me. Again, it's not even that I'm mad. I'm not even disappointed, because to be disappointed, I would have to care about the game still. I'm not here to be doomer, and I'm not here to kind of prophesize that the game's going to end, because I don't think it is. I think for the player base that now exists, it's going to be a lot more foolhardy, and it's going to take a lot longer to decrease from this point out, because I think over the last year... That makes sense, because once you get down to an extremely low number, the people that are going to be left playing this game are just the people that are so fucking stupid and so fucking ignorant... Uh, that And they'll tell you all the time, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And that's that's code for I can't play I can't play any other multiplayer FPS shooter with even teams. That's what that's code for. These people have experienced success in an FPS game for the absolute fucking first time in their lives. Because if they play a 10v10 fucking shooter or a 12v12 or, or a, a 32v32 or... Any other shooter game that has fucking even teams, they suck dick. They're awful mechanically. They're dog shit. They'll they'll never admit they're dog shit. They'll never try to improve ever. But this game, this game is one of a kind in that it lets you it lets a player like that have a fucking out. It lets them have an out. You can go sit with fucking 40 other people and go down a, a fucking dumbass lattice lane and fight fucking three or four guys that show up to defend the base all night long. And you can do that every fucking night until the server shut down. And you can feel good about yourself, and you can win, and you can be you can be a real fucking winner for the first time ever in your life playing an FPS game. That's the draw for these people, guys. Uh, I, I have to keep bringing it up because every time someone says there's nothing else like it, Deep down at the heart of it, they're always a shitter, and they're always some fucking dumbass shitter who sits in pop 24-7. Anyone who fucking says, there's no other game like it, there's no other shooter like it. Almost every single fucking time someone says that, I will guarantee fucking to you that that person is a shitty ass player, and they sit in pop all fucking time. All the time they're playing the game. All the time. That's who says dumb shit like that. Okay? Uh, yeah. So when you get down to these numbers, these, these pathetically below 1,000 average daily players for all servers combined, you're, now, you're getting into the people that truly are so fucking pathetic and shit that they can, they can never leave this game. They can never leave. They can't stop playing. They can't go play anything anything else because they suck at it. Um, these are you're going to get into these numbers where these people are are like he says the guys that are going to be here till the server shut down and and there is a hard there's a hard floor for that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the last vestiges at least on Cobalt of players that have that depth based gameplay largely have left, and I know there are still some of Miller and to uh... if it's so deep. If it's so deep and strategic, then then why why are they bored of it and leaving? Because that that seems like a, a counter to me. If the gameplay and you you're gonna falsely attribute, or you're gonna falsely attribute some gimmick, fucking sp like a router or having a, having a router in the game or some dog shit with construction, you're gonna falsely attribute that and and try to use that as some grand depth that these people can see as as being a, a part of the depth that's keeping them in the game uh but it's really not and if it's so fucking deep you know what keeps people playing the game is the depth of the gunplay and the infantry combat not not whatever bullshit word salad made up nonsense that zergling shitters have to come up with to make themselves feel better about being shit in an FPS game. That's that's probably part of what the actual only depth that's been attempted to be fucking eroded and destroyed by people like you and, and Rel, but unfortunately you failed. Uh you failed at that uh with your all your awful suggestions. Larger degree on Emerald, I think still some are around.
But look, here's the thing, all good things, they do come to an end, including Planetside, and it's a shame, but that's the truth, and so, you know, am I going to sit here and be mad? Am I going to sit here and be salty? Am I going to complain for years? No. I mean, all you've done is complain about good players for the better part of two to three years now, so you've already done that. I couldn't care enough to complain. I only complained when I cared, right? So I'm over it. And this That's is essentially fair. one last video, just I think for the audience, for the people that have watched over the years, for the people... It's it's funny though, all with with how much you talked about how deep your gameplay was and, and all that shit, and how, how casuals delude themselves into thinking uh, what they're doing in, in playing the game this way is such a deep and strategic fucking thing. It's it's funny how the game didn't hold your attention. Uh, whereas if you had actually invested time trying to improve at the game and, and and learn anything other than whatever you were brought up in in your hive mind shitter mindset, you might still be playing. People that are still thinking, should I be playing? It's been a few thousand hours now. The game isn't really the same as it used to be. And this is really just a video. It is and it isn't. Uh, you've heard the old... The old adage, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, and essentially, for me, the game is the same uh, when when I play it. it. You log in, you redeploy to fucking underpop defenses and fight zergs, and you deal with their cancer, and you focus on your individual fucking play, and you you try to kill as many people in a short amount of time as possible. And you try to kill the individual players as fast as possible in individual engagements. And you work on that and get better at that. That formula for me hasn't changed in 10 years. Game doesn't feel that different to me. Uh, the servers are have always been ass. Uh, the netcode sucks. Uh... Maxes are cancer, especially when you're in underpop fighting against people who the instant you kill them one time in a way they don't like, they just pull maxes, and then you've got three or four of those people at every fight. Uh, there's always kind of been a, a looming cheating threat in the game. It's more realized now. Uh, the maps are still the same. They suck, and the, the stuff that's been done to the maps is dog shit. SMR is worse. Osher is unplayable dog shit. Uh, it's not really all that different. Uh, but again, I'm coming from the perspective of someone who's played formulaically and, and played the same way for 10 years. Because, again, like this guy says after 2,000 hours, you try to get into some depth in the gameplay. Ah! Well, fortunately, I got into some depth, some deeper parts of the game much earlier than that, and it's carried me to wherever I am now. Video for you guys, um, just to kind of say where I, th what I think a lot of us are really thinking. Because, you know, the thing is, at least the devs are listening. That's nice. They made a bunch of... Yeah, but what, what does that even... What the fuck does that even matter? That... I think that's way worse. That's probably... That's that's worse to me than them not than them not taking feedback at all because if they're listening they're listening to shitters which is mostly mostly every dev change in the last 5 to 6 years fuck even further than that they're not listening they've never listened to any good players so they're listening to shitters and that's a bad thing so if they're if the devs currently are listening to bad shitty players then that's probably not good for the game you know and if they do listen to things that shitters think are important and they do something about it or make a patch uh, pertaining to it, whatever it is will be, even if it's a good idea in theory, they'll fuck up the execution of it. They'll have mind-bogglingly stupid ideas and implementations of whatever it is. They'll fail to execute. I mean, how many times do you have to see it? How many times do you have to see it? How many times do you have to see it? Sundra changes that were based on community feedback and changed over time based based on the feedback. So, you know, they did that like four or five. Wow. So they did the very, the very basic, most minimum fucking required of what a dev team does for a fucking game.
Wow, incredible. At different times across the process of their first initial conception of, of how the Sunjo changes would be to what it eventually ended up being, you know, it did change over time. Was it what the game needed? No. Was it super high quality in terms of game design? Not necessarily. But look, the, they did the best they could. And frankly, I don't... Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of hearing that? Aren't you guys fucking tired of... We did the best. We're having to have these people come and say... They, they did the best they could. They, they, they did the best they could, guys. Aren't you so... F I don't know about you, but I'm so fucking tired of it. I'm so fucking tired of it, man. If you can't do the job, if you're incompetent, if you can't get the right answers on the fucking test, get somebody who can or stop making fucking games. I'm so tired of the pity party sob fucking story about these fucking people, man. I'm not going to feel bad for you. I'm not ever going to feel bad for you because the game dev is the only job I can remotely think of where you can continually be an incompetent fucking moron or a retard, fail over and over again, and suffer and have zero accountability. Keep coming to work. And not only that, you will have brain dead fucking moron parasocial shitter retards falling over themselves to make excuses for you. I'm not going to feel, I'm not ever, I will never ever feel bad for a game dev. You couldn't pay me to. I don't know how many people would have done a better job. I can't say that it would have been many. Planetside is a difficult game to design for, but truthfully... Yeah, it's really hard when you have people with dumb fuck ideas that keep being put into positions of making the decisions. It's... This has come up over and over again. Planet Side 2 is a hard game to design for. Uh, that may be true, but you know what? It's impossible to design for when you keep fucking handing the reins to fucking idiots. Yeah, then it's really hard. I couldn't care about it anymore. Um... When I think about all the good games that have come out in just the last year alone, things like, um, I've been playing a lot of FTL Motivars. More recently, Core Keeper. Um, I've been playing Beyond All Reason for the last year. For have you noticed that almost all of these are not FPS games? Do you, do you know why a guy like this plays this FPS game? It's for the reason that I talked about earlier. That's exactly why. That's exactly why this type of player plays this game and is interested in this game i didn't i didn't notice him talk about anything else even remotely relevant did you i didn't post punk 2 is out in a few weeks and there's a bunch of other games there as well with actual depth to them that i think make just playing planet side it almost just makes it an odd choice and so now well this game has depth you've just never you've pretended Whatever environment that you've been in has pretended there's a depth to it that never really existed. And when the populations dry up and the fights that you're seeking don't really exist anymore, the pretend depth that you saw in the game isn't there anymore. Whereas the depth someone like me or the players like me see will be there as long as there is one single other soul on the server. That's the difference. Now I'd quickly want to touch on what the future is going to be. So first off, I think Planet Side is going to be very casual. But I do think maybe at some point there may be some kind of competitor in some ways that already are. The game is going to be very casual. What the fuck do you think the game has been for, like... <laughs> uh, Foxhole has the territory-based game and also has the community there as well. Have you noticed that when these guys... When these guys bring up these other games that they're supposedly like Planetside, they're all also always dead dog shit that no one plays anyway. Have you noticed that? Because that's something that I've actually looked into. Yeah, how many average players Foxhole has on Steam? Uh, 3,000. Uh, with an all-time peak of 11,000. Uh, yeah, nobody's playing that game either. Uh, so, yeah. If the if the uh, <laughs> if you're looking for an alternative to a dead failing niche game, then here's this other dead failing niche game. I always love that shit when 
when these absolute morons come and make comments on my fucking channel about, Lex, you should play this, this dog shit dead mill sim game. Uh, you should play this dead failing fucking other game. It's like, thanks, man. I, I'm so glad you think so highly of me that I should go play this other failing dead dog shit game. Uh, I really appreciate that. There's other games coming out, like um, Ashes of Creation, which has the community part. Maybe World of Warcraft Classic Plus might have the community part. Man, please, fucking... I, I so desperately and badly want 2019 Classic WoW back, man. Come the fuck on, guys. Please stop with the season of fucking Discovery bullshit. Please stop. Please, 2019 Classic. I beg you, please. We've got... Because World of Warcraft, and especially World of Warcraft Classic, that's an actual fucking MMORPG. That is an actual fucking MMORPG. Uh, this game, not even close. Anvil Empires, which again might have that community part. And I'm sure there'll be other things coming down the line that have the same kind of community vibe that Planetside does. It may just... Community vibe is massively overrated not be in the same MMO FPS form. And truthfully, I think that's okay. I really did enjoy the FPS part of this game, weirdly enough, because I'm not actually an FPS player other than Planetside. Wow. <laughs> Intuitive, aren't I? But I think that's the same with a lot of people that, you know, play Planetside. They, they are more interested in the territory-based gameplay, the alerts, the uh, vehicles, combined arms, seeing it all work together. In harmony, I think. I don't. Yeah, not. <laughs> probably work together in harmony is not the uh, phrase that I would. A lot use. of people really do enjoy. And also, to be honest, I think a lot of people, and I don't think this gets talked about enough. People play Planet Side. I would say largely because it's free. If it was at the same cost that, say, for example, Fox. Oh, if this game, if this game had a a subscription. A monthly subscription fee, like the first planets I did. Uh, oh, it would have no it, nobody. In fact, I think probably most of the people that are playing this game now are just poor, poor shitter casuals who who cry when you ask them to spend five dollars on the game. Yeah, free to play has been one of the worst things ever for this fucking game, and it at the same time has also been one of the best features for it. It's, it's kind of funny. Oxol was. Honestly, I don't know if the game would still be around. And so that lower barrier of entry really does do Planet Side a good service. And their membership model, I think, was very important for Planet Side's success because it meant that there had to be depth there. When you get all your money up front from someone just buying your game, there's no incentivization to keep them around. But when the game's free, it better damn well be good and worth paying for, or otherwise you're going to be out of pocket. And so, look, I, I really do feel like that's why largely Planetside was successful to begin with. It does actually have a lot of depth there that, yeah, maybe it's got taken away over time, but it was there. And I can't be mad that it's gone. I can't be disappointed that it's gone. I'm just happy. Even just to have the chance to build like the community that I built. Um, every single day we've got like 10, 15 people on voice on Discord, which is crazy. Such an incredibly positive, active community that, you know, I, I just can't, couldn't be happier with, to be honest. And I feel like a lot of people feel the same way with their own respective communities, you know, lifelong friendships sometimes that are built off planet side. And oh yeah, I think everybody that I play games with now, it, the, the amount of people that I've, I've had the, the privilege and, and the fortune of interacting with and becoming friends with over the last... 10 years is you know i can never i can never take that away from the game but that's not that's not to say that wouldn't happen in any other game that i that i played like that so that's i don't i don't think you can it's one of those things that that people try to attribute to to a planet side 2 effect but i don't i think that gets falsely uh it's not necessarily true. It, the people, if I had played a game and gotten into a, a completely different game, I feel like I would have made the same types of uh, relationships and friendships in any other game. It just so happened to be this game. And for that, yeah, I'm thankful. Uh, for, for having even any audience at all, uh, you guys watching this video right now, if, to have any audience at all to talk about this shit that I talk about on this dead, irrelevant, no-viewer game, like, 
it's awesome. Uh, it's cool. And it's it's never been about it's not about making money or God who the f who does anyone think that I, like I actually make money doing this shit? What? And even the guys that have like huge sub counts and all that shit they don't make they don't make fucking dick. Really, it's it's a passion it's a passion thing and and like for me personally, I'll take a second to to thank the people that have been around and who have given people like me an audience. Uh, in the first place, and I, I think, I think in the in the same breath, I can say zealous, yeah, uh, zealous made his own channel and did his own thing, and I don't agree with a lot of the things that he says or done his, did his own or he has said or done in his content pieces, but at the same time, uh, yeah, he obviously had a drive to talk about the game, uh, and he put out a ton of videos. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, one thing you always see with these guys, and this happens all the time, is you have these guys that, that start out making new player friendly guides and trying to tell or teach people how to play the game. They always make the mistake of going into philosophical fucking discussion on the game. And they're always, <laughs> well, they're, that's good for me. The transition from someone who makes uh, fucking new player how to tie your shoes guides into talking about deep philosophical fucking issues with the game. Uh, man, I love those guys because I get a chance to rip them an asshole uh, and it's fun for me. Uh, but at the same time, they always do it. It's like they can't... I'm trying to think of, of, a, of a content creator that... I don't know why they do it. I don't know where they get off thinking. I guess it's in a sense of... I guess they get their ego inflated by having a big fucking following of people that suck their dick. Um, I don't know. And it doesn't get talked about much, but that is part of what makes Planet Side and community-based games so good in general. I don't know about you guys, but I find the anonymized matchmaking where you play against a bunch of randoms over and over again, it's kind of anti-human, it's unsociable, and I'm not a fan. Well, that's that's a new age dev push. Uh, like Planet Side Two was what you go. We guys have to remember, guys, that Planet Side Two was developed and made in a time where, right, right, I don't know what the year count would be, but it was before the push into that, into this new age DEI fucking leftist activist dog shit fucking moron industry filled fucking shit attacked whatever the fuck is going on with games now this game was made in a time where nerds still made games for nerds not not activists fucking make games for activists and then uh waste the company's money because the game doesn't sell uh or having interactions Having interactions with other people on the internet in a video game was an expected outcome. And not these these fucking pussy-ass kids raised by iPads uh, and Kindles and all this shit uh, brought up not raised by their fucking parents. Their absentee fucking useless uh, parents, millennial parents, you know, people my age, uh, not raising their children properly. Uh, these people have no social skills and they have no idea. They're not at all fucking ready for the reality of interact, even, even fucking basic interactions with other human beings in the world. Um, yeah, that was, this game was made before all that shit, before you couldn't have a fucking scoreboard in a battlefield game. Before they turned off the all chat in all the fucking games for fear that someone's pussy will get hurt because they got fucking made fun of in a in a competitive round of fucking whatever, you know? Before the industry was inundated with these spineless pussy boy software designers whose only goal, like, they just want to phase in and out of existence in a game having no social interaction whatsoever. Fuck off. This game was made before that. Could a game like this get made nowadays by a studio, like a modern studio? 
I don't think so. Probably not. Man, like when I kill a motherfucker, I want to have some history, some story behind that person that I've killed. The outfit that they're associated with. The friends that they're associated with. I think that's fun. Like genuinely. There's like a little story going on there that you just don't get in other games. Welcome to every game ever that has a community. Uh, not unique to So look, game. boys, I'm not here to be Doomer. I'm not here to say, oh my god, planet size dying, because again, I think it will be around for years. It will just be in a different state. It will be in a state of primarily casual players that... I understand why he keeps saying this. You know... Yeah, that's, that's who's... It, may, it, it confuses me because I thought... I thought you said that casuals were couldn't play the game and were being fucking mercilessly farmed and pushed out of the game because the skill gap differential was so high. That's literally what you said. But now, no, it's all casual. Like, Enjoy the game for what it is now, and that's fine. It's just a different player base. It's a different group of people that are now interested. Over the last year or two, I think the game has become more and more an arcade shooter more than anything else. It always has been. It always has been. It has always been that the entire fucking length of the game. It didn't just become that because you realized it. It's always been that. Everyone it has always been a Battlefield style arcade type fucking. It's never been a milsim. It's never been a fucking tactical role playing shooter. It's never been any of that. It has always been a bigger Battlefield game. That's always what it's been. It didn't just become that because you finally fucking woke the fuck up. I'm glad you are realizing it now. Um... But there was a long time where you didn't, and you said really dumb shit uh, in regards to that. One always gets like... And a lot of people are like you. A last video, but sometimes I never really realize when that is. But I wanted to intentionally do that with this channel and say when the last Planet Side video is. I can't say that I won't do anything else in the future because I might, but this certainly is the last Planet Side video. So, without further ado, without further stalling, have a wonderful rest of your week. I'm out. GG. Bye-bye. All right. Well, uh, there. I've uh, I've bloviated. I've gone on and on over and over again and again. Um, this is probably the last zealous reaction I'll do ever. Maybe. Uh, as for other reaction videos, and I, I, there's really nothing to talk about in the game. Um, all the current events. The 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 well is fucking dry, my guys. Like. Would I ever consider going back and finishing the class rebalance fucking series that I started? I already did the infill and the light assault fucking thing. Why would I do that? It's a complete and total waste of time. Uh, the people that run the game uh, will, won't will listen to anyone even remotely competent or who can think, and those changes probably won't ever even come to the game. They probably won't even do any class changes, and if they do, they'll be fucking stupid. So what's the point? What's there for me to talk about? Uh, so yeah. Uh, well, if that is the final Zealous Reaction video, I gotta say, I really enjoyed, uh, splicing up this specimen over time. Uh, I feel like I'm thankful for him because he was a, a really, a really, uh, black and white, um, caricature of, I think, he, he really represented well, I think, what a lot of ignorant dumb fucks uh, in the casual community, uh, talk about and think. And I'm glad to have had the opportunity to, uh, systematically fucking take him apart, uh, piece by piece every time he made a video that said dumb shit. And today was no different. Uh, so yeah. Don't know when I'll see you guys again. I don't know when the next piece of content will be for the game. Uh, not really playing the game. I'm not really playing much of anything. I'm actually fucking super busy this time of year. Uh, but yeah, uh, if I don't see you, then uh, yeah.